Ebola continues to ravage West Africa. Although Nigeria and Senegal are on the list of affected countries, Sierra Leone, Liberia and Guinea remain the epicenter of the outbreak. First cases diagnosed in Guinea in late February. By the beginning of October, the World Health Organization confirmed that at least 3,300 people had died and more than 7,000 infections had been reported. Nigeria's first case was confirmed on the 17th of July. A man traveling from Liberia collapsed at the Lagos airport. Ebola spread to 20 other people in the commercial capital and to a second city, Port Harcourt. With speedy coordinated action by some of its top doctors, Nigeria has reported just eight deaths and 20 cases of the virus. The UN has declared Nigeria Ebola free, but health officials aren't relaxing yet. Officers can stay. As long as you have an outbreak in other parts of the sub-region, we're still at risk in Nigeria. So we have to continue to carry out these public health measures. In contrast, it took months for Liberia, Sierra Leone and Guinea to recognize the outbreak. And health officials there remain overwhelmed, desperate for international assistance. New figures from NGO Save the Children show that five people are infected with Ebola every hour in Sierra Leone. And that rate is expected to double by the end of October. The hardest hit countries have one thing in common, weak health systems with insufficient funding. Less than 100 U.S. dollars per person per year is invested in health in most of West Africa. The situation is worsened by local health care workers, the most at risk walking off the job for fear of infection and even going on strike. The WHO didn't declare a health emergency until August, five months after the first case was diagnosed. The resultant delay in sending untested drugs and humanitarian relief as well as the rollout of quarantines has turned the outbreak into a tragedy of massive proportions. The WHO estimates the number of people infected by Ebola could hit 21,000 by early November. And forecasts by the United States Center for Disease Control and Prevention suggest there could be 1.4 million cases internationally by January. And so the World Health Body is ramping up its efforts. We're helping to build capacity to train response staff as well as the port health services themselves and to empower them to be able to meet the challenges of this uh, outbreak and contain it as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Experts say the solution in containing the outbreak doesn't lie only in quarantines and humanitarian relief. Instead, human resource shortages and structural deficiencies in fragile health care systems need to be addressed. Aduria Chumba, Lagos.